So the history of MDMA begins uh, in 1912 when it was first synthesized and patented, patented by Merck, but uh, they didn't do anything at all till 1927. And Merck did some preclinical studies in animals and found nothing of interest, and they decided to just shelve the compound. This is around the time their patent is going to expire. The next we know of MDMA is uh, the Army Chemical Warfare Service, MK Ultra, looking for mind control drugs. And then Sasha Shulgin, who was an incredible chemist, he started looking for new drugs for psychotherapy and for personal growth and spirituality. And he resynthesized MDMA, experimented with it on himself, and felt that it had incredible potential for therapy. And so he gave it to Leo Zeff, who was the leader of the underground psychedelic psychotherapy community. From the middle 70s to the early 80s, roughly half a million doses of MDMA were used in therapeutic growth settings mostly by uh, people that Leo had trained, and it was found to be useful in a, in a wide variety of conditions, but it leaked out of that community, became sold as ecstasy, and this was at the time of Nancy Reagan and Just Say No and the rise of the drug war again, and so it was clear that it was doomed. So this was an incredible opportunity to gather support to prepare for the defense of MDMA once the Drug Enforcement Administration finally decided to move against it. Um, it was in Dallas at the Stark Club where ecstasy really became popular. Uh, MDMA became popular as ecstasy in a, a dance club setting. Um, George Bush, all sorts of people uh, participated here. And this is what attracted the attention of the DEA. So in the summer of 84, DEA moved to put MDMA in Schedule One. They only knew about it as a party drug. They didn't know about it as a therapy drug. So in 86, I started MAPS as a nonprofit. MAPS is the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. MDMA is the most gentle of all the psychedelics. That's why I felt it would be the first one to make it through the system.